morning, everybody, and welcome to church. Uh, we just pray that you are still enjoying this series. Uh, we're going on a part four of our series now, and you are in for a special treat today as our youth pastor, uh, Jesse Long, is going to be bringing the message uh, and the topic for today. I'm not going to tell you the topic. He'll introduce the topic for you, uh, but you'll notice some themes uh, through the singing of songs just like last week. Uh, and I just pray that as we've been going through this series that you find yourself being challenged uh, both mentally and also spiritually by what is said and sung and the lessons that we're learning about the challenges to our faith. Uh, it'll be no different today as Jesse brings the message uh, dealing with another important topic uh, that is also very controversial um, to the, to the non-Christian world, but one that has to be discussed and understand by us as Christians to defend our witness and to make sure that we are giving the proper presentation of the gospel. So you're in for a treat today. I just pray you'll enjoy the service today. We're going to start off by, by singing a song number 27 in your red songbooks. It's song number 27. It says, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and forevermore. Uh, when you go through one of the verses, um, at th verse 3, it says, uh, verse 3, Death of death and hell's destruction, lead me safe on Canaan's side. Uh, that whatever we're going through, we know that if Jesus is with us, Jesus is in our boat, then we will land safely on the other side of whatever journey we are in. And so we're going to sing on, out on all three verses of song number 27, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. <laughs> is going to come and she is going to bring our scripture reading, I believe, found from the book of Galatians. I will be reading from Galatians 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 19 through 26. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immortality, impurity, and debauchery, ideology and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, dissension, factions, and envy drunkenness, orgies, and, and like that. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to G Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with the passions and desire. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, or envying of each other. Well, again, good morning, and we are glad you are joining us for worship today. And uh, we are just grateful that you are choosing our service to continue to, as we go into this series. 
uh, in apologetics and understanding our faith better. And we are reminded uh, so many times through all of our messages that we have gone through about the glorious day that Jesus uh, conquered the grave. He hung on the cross, but then he did not stay on the cross. He defeated the grave, and he achieved our salvation um, for all of us. The one way that we don't have to spend eternity in darkness and hell, but we can be rescued uh, from the pit and be lifted high eternally with him. Um, that's something we have to look forward to as Christians because of Jesus. And so we want to celebrate that glorious day as we sing this first song. Now this next song we're going to sing um, 
is definitely not a new song. Um, in fact, it is um, older than a, a couple of members of our praise band. Um, before they were born, this song was written. Um, it's a great one, written by an old English band, not an old English band, but an English worship band called De uh, Delirious. Um, and it's just a really great song that talks about mountains trembling and that opening the way for the Lord to move. And so we're going to sing this one out. Uh, did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar when the people rose to sing of Christ, the risen one? And so I pray that this song is a blessing to you. Maybe a new one for most people hearing it today, but uh, as you hear it, we just pray you'll worship with us. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
is one we have sung in this, in this course several times, and that we are not meant to live uh, life in a, in a place of darkness, in a place of despair, in a place of defeat and fear. But because Jesus conquered the grave and he has raised us to life with him, we are no longer slaves to fear um, because we are children of God. Uh, and if you believe in Jesus and he is your Lord and Savior, then you have no reason to live in fear anymore because he's with you. And so we're going to sing this beautiful song and just shout it uh, from the rooftops. You know, sing it out so people know that you're not afraid, that you're with the Lord, and that they can be too. Uh, it's important, an important message, especially at the time that our world is going through right now, and our particular region of the United States right now too. And there's so much things people are anxious for and fearful of over this next week, and we just want to just speak God's peace and love over everybody.
congregation, over everybody who's listening to this service today. Lord, there's so many things in the world that are hangering for our attention, things to be fearful of, Lord, with this virus and now hurricanes. And Lord, there's, there are obstacles and there are challenges that will always face us. But Lord, we are reminded through singing today from your word that, Lord, if we are your children, if we belong to Jesus Christ, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be a slave to fear. But Lord, we can be set free from it. We can be encouraged and emboldened and empowered because we are your children. We are children of God. And so, Lord, we pray over everybody who's watching this message today. If they are feeling anxious, if they're feeling depressed, if they're feeling nervous, scared, or fearful, that, Lord, you would speak into them a word of hope. A word of encouragement, a word of reminder that you are still with us, that you are still with them. You have not abandoned us. For your word promised, in your word, you promised that you would never, ever leave us nor forsake us. You would be with us always, even to the end. And so, Lord, I just pray that as an encouragement and a blessing over everybody who is listening. We pray for all those who are of our house that are dealing with coronavirus, that are battling it even as we speak, that, Lord, we would pray that you as Jehovah Rapha, the healer, would touch their bodies and continue to help them feel better and get better to conquer this virus. And that, Lord, one day we can be brought back together and get to worship with one another so that together we can lift your name high in this place. But, Lord, we know that for this season, we have to worship this way to make sure that everybody is safe. But that doesn't mean that you are not glorified. For Lord, you're glorified in even our homes now. And Lord, we just pray that you would continue to be glorified as we go through this service. That you would be lifted high. You would draw everybody unto you. Now, Lord, we ask for a, a blessing upon Jesse as he comes to bring us uh, part four of our series. I pray, Lord, that you give everybody listening a tender heart, a teachable spirit to receive what God you have given Jesse. For these topics are not easy topics, but Lord, we know you are speaking through them. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing upon Jesse and your anointing of his words. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us, uh, whether you're watching it as it streams live or if you're watching afterwards later on in your day. Um, either way, we appreciate you joining us and hope that you are able to fill the spirit in your house. So before I get started with the sermon today, I just want to acknowledge something that I don't know if everyone's picked up on. The past couple weeks in a row there, Captain Patrick made references in his sermons to 90s and early 2000s rap songs. <laughs> I just, want, I just want you all to know that. Now, me and Liz picked up on them. I don't know if everyone else has. I don't know if you did, but if you didn't, walk, go back about a month or so, maybe a little further, and watch all the sermons. See if you can get all the rap references. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I just want to tell you that because I did the same thing, but I'm not as good as Captain Patrick. See, mine's just kind of out there. So the title of my sermon is The Choice is Yours. And that is the title of a rap song from 1991 from a group called Black Sheep, and it's an awesome song. So this has nothing to do with my sermon. I'm just really proud of this reference. <laughs> I just want you to know that I did it, okay? <laughs> but also, if you remember last week, Captain Patrick did an excellent sermon on freedom and the myth that uh, being a Christian or being in a relationship with God somehow restricts or robs you of your freedom. And today's sermon is going to kind of piggyback off of that train of thought a little bit. We're going to talk about free will and also God's love. In fact, our scripture reference today directly follows the scripture reference we used last week. This series that we're on is Christian Apologetics. This series, we're focusing on what we believe, why we believe it, and how we can defend it. 
And I hope you all have realized how important that is as a believer, to be able to defend what you believe. Christian apologetics isn't apologizing for being a Christian. I hope you all have picked up on that by now. But if you don't know how to defend what you believe, then you will lose what you believe. So I hope that you all are really taking this series to heart. Today, as I, start, or as I stated earlier, we're going to be focusing on free will and God's love. And we're going to be using these things to try to answer two questions. Now, usually we just answer one, but I cheated a little bit. And we're going to try to answer two, but I think they connect together pretty well. It's hard to separate them. Those questions are, do we really have free will if we go to hell for not accepting Christ? And if God is all loving, then why would he send people to hell in the first place? Those are the questions we're going to try to answer. To start off, this is going to be kind of funny. Who listening and who here in the building has heard of something called the friend zone? Okay, so I am a master of the friend zone. I am mayor of the friend zone. I'll run that place, okay? If you don't know what that is, I'm going to explain it to you. Allow me to educate you. So whether you're a man or you're a woman, sometime in your life, you've had feelings for somebody else, right? You love somebody. You would do anything for them, and you, you just want to tell them. So you go... You tell them how you feel, and they respond with, I only like you as a friend. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Just take the knife. Just take the knife out, right? It's so painful. Whenever you know the feelings you have for somebody are not going to be reciprocated. They do not feel the same way. That's, that's painful, right? And I've been on both sides of it. One side's very uncomfortable. One side hurts. I would rather be on the uncomfortable side if I'm telling the truth. But it's just something that I think we all can relate to. And with that, there are two sides to that story, right? You have the one person who doesn't feel the same way. And they have to say, I only like you as a friend. And then you have the person receiving that news. And you might be wondering what this has to do with the questions we're trying to answer, but stick with me. So ladies, not to stereotype, but I think you all can relate to that first person a whole lot, right? Like I'm sure you all have had a guy at one point or another in your life say to you, I really like you, and you had to respond with, I only like you as a friend. I th you all can relate to that second person too. I'm not denying that. And guys, we can relate to that first person. But it it does bring up a couple questions that I just want to ask you. Whenever somebody comes to you and they say, I love you, is it required for you to say, I love you back? No. You get to choose in life who you love. You get to choose in life whether you show that love back or not. And it's okay if you meet somebody that you do not feel that same way about. The choice is yours. You decide who you love, and it's the same thing with our relationship with God. God tells us that he loves us. It's up to us whether we accept that or not. In the Bible, it tells us that we do not have to love God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to love God. It does say, however, if you're wanting to go to heaven, if you're wanting to spend eternity with God, then yes, you do. And that brings us to our next point. So just like we have the freedom to choose who we love, nobody can force us to love them. And we cannot force anybody to love us. 
Nobody has the power to control how you feel about them. Only you have that power. So let's say we love somebody and we're constantly telling them we love them. And we get so frustrated because they're not saying they love us back. They're not showing that. If we continue to say, I love you, I love you, and then we say, I'm going to force them to love us. I'm going to force them to be in our presence. Is that love? No. You cannot force somebody to be in your presence. So then... Why would we expect God to force us to be in his presence if we're constantly showing that we don't love him? If we're constantly saying and showing through our actions that we don't love God, why would he then force us to be in his presence for eternity? That would not be love. Love within itself requires a choice. Last night I called Captain Patrick just to make sure that what I was saying was kind of making sense. So if it doesn't to you, blame him, not me. And he kind of mentioned that. He said, you know, love requires a choice. If you are programmed to love somebody, if there's some kind of thing where you're just automatically, you have no choice, then that's not really love. And that's so true. It is your choice whether to love God. And if you choose not to love God, then he will not force you to be in his presence. If we turn our Bibles to the scripture passage today, Galatians 5, 19 through 26, we can see some of the choices we have in life. Just a little backstory: The book of Galatians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church of Galatia. And it is addressing the issue of the people there not understanding that in order to have a relationship with God, you must have a relationship with Jesus. That to have that eternal reward, you must accept the love of Christ. See, they still followed the old way of thinking where they wanted to focus on the Mosaic law, Moses' law. And because of that, it caused this separation between them and God. They did not have this personal relationship they were in essence denying God's love in verses 19 through 21 we see a warning issued by Paul to the church of Galatia it says this the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft hatred Discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here, Paul writes down a list of things that the church of Galatia and we as humans can often choose to love instead of God. But I think we can add more to that list. You know, being down here in Texas, I'm pretty convinced that more people love football than they love God, and that includes the people who call themselves believers. How many people prefer to spend their time watching television or playing video games than they do with God? And you might be saying, well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with having something that takes your mind off of things every once in a while. That's okay. But let me ask you something. If, uh, if you have somebody you love that you want to be around and you go and you try to spend time with them and they ignore your presence to focus on something else, are they showing that they love you? No. I've lost friendships because somebody has called me and go, hey, man, come over and hang out. And I go over and hang out, and they just sit there doing this at their TV. Once again, this isn't bashing video games. This is saying 
the things we put in front of God and our relationship with him shows him that we do not love him. Let's, let's talk about something a little bit more serious. Let's say you have somebody in your life who you love, but yet they're, they're constantly cheating on you. Are they showing that they love you? No. And think about how that makes you feel. Whenever you have somebody that you love, that you want to be around, but yet they deny your presence. Think about that hurt that you have from that. The sadness, the pain, the anger. And then multiply that by infinity. And that is how God feels whenever we choose things of this world above him. We do the exact same thing to God and then we don't understand why we're not allowed in his presence. Why would he allow us to be in heaven for eternity? We don't love him. And I don't, I don't, this is kind of off topic a little bit, but I also just want anybody that hears this to know that if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're struggling with these things, not all relationships are meant to last forever. Just something to think about. Just if anybody needs to hear that. Whenever we do these things to God, whenever we put these things in front of him, we're showing him that we don't love him. Because whenever we truly love somebody, there's something that happens, we change. It's indescribable. It's, you start to become a new person. We have a couple married people here, and I'm sure there's some married people watching. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you the same person now that you were before you married the person you love? No. If the answer is yes, once again, you might want to reevaluate yourself. But you're not. Because love changed you. You grew. You learned. You appreciated the person you were with. You spent more time with them. and You understood them more. And because of that, it started to change who you were for the better. When you truly love someone, you grow and you change. In verses 22 through 26, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against, against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. When we choose to love God, when we choose to accept the love he has shown us through his Son, Jesus Christ... We no longer love the things of this world. We have decided to fully enter into a relationship with God, with our maker. And through that, we can be in his presence for eternity. Because we've shown and we've proven that we truly love him. Through our actions through our words, and through our heart. When we accept Christ, we start to show these things 
It's called the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. It says here forbearance, but patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, I'll also ask another question to the people who are married. If you have changed, was it one day you were this way, one day you were the next, or was it over time you started to grow and change? Sometimes we can feel guilt and we can feel like, well, maybe we truly don't love God because we still struggle with things. There's a difference between struggling and just giving in to them. It's okay to have temptation. Temptation in your life will not go away. Jesus was tempted. It's, it's things of this world are going to tempt you. But are you choosing them over God? That's the point. Or are you choosing an effort to grow and change to show the fruits of the Spirit? The choice is yours. The choice is ours. Whether we choose to accept God's love or not. And like with every choice, there are consequences good and bad. If you choose to deny God's love, which you are allowed to do, you are allowed to live your life however you want to live your life. God will not can make you love him. But if you choose to do that, that means you are choosing a life of temporary pleasure and an eternity of torment. That is the choice you are making. If you choose to accept God's love and let it into your heart, and love God back, you are choosing a life of joy, but also hardship. But with that, you, are, you have somebody who will help you get through those hard times. That is what your life will be. You will have joy and you will have great times. You will also have hard times, but you will have somebody in your corner. And more importantly as well, you will have an eternity of bliss. The choice is yours. Right now I'm gonna invite Captain Patrick to come up and just, uh, if you wouldn't mind playing No Longer Slaves. All the songs that we sang earlier are focused on that change that can happen. On how wonderful it can feel whenever you enter into that relationship with God. And I hope that everyone who hears this makes that choice. And you know that feeling. But once again, no one can make you do it. God will not make you love him. It has to be your choice. Right now, I'm going to just invite you, whether you're here in the building, whether you're at home, so just close your eyes. And right now, if you never felt what God's love feels like, understand it's right there. Just say to God, God, I want to choose you. 
God, I no longer want to choose the things of this world over you, God. I want you to be first. I want to know what it feels like to be truly loved by you. Call out to him. Reach out to him. Captain Patrick plays. We're just going to take a few moments of silence. And I just want you to focus solely on your relationship with God. Don't focus on anything else but Him. your presence, that we wouldn't turn away from it, that we wouldn't choose to put anything else in front of you, Lord. That we would make that choice to spend our life and our eternity in your presence. Lord, when we accept you, we no longer have to be a slave to fear. We no longer have to be a slave to things of this world, Lord. We can be free of all of that because your love is more powerful than anything here on earth. And Lord, for whatever reason we decide to turn away, whatever reason we might have decided in our past to deny your love, I pray that we would understand it's never too late as long as we are still breathing to turn around look at you and say, God, I love you. To say, God, I am sorry for the sins I've committed against you and I pray that you would forgive me. And your love that conquers everything will forgive us because of the sacrifice of your son. And we can be welcome into your embrace, Lord. It all starts with a simple choice, yes or no. Do we accept your love? Yes or no. Lord, once again, I just pray that for everyone who hears this, that they would make that choice and that they would be protected by your love. Lord, it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Guys, if during this sermon or during this time of prayer, if you made a commitment to God, reach out. You know, put it down in the comments. Go to our website. Let us know. That way we can rejoice with you. We want you to understand that Whenever you accept the love of Christ, you are accepting him. And there is a world of believers who are going to rejoice with you. If you have any prayer, prayer concerns or you would like somebody to pray with you, please go to our website. Don't be scared to reach out. Thank you all very much. God bless.
Well, thank you, Jesse, for that wonderful message. And I do hope and pray that uh, we all choose, that you all choose uh, to love God um, and to love him back because the Bible says we love because he first loved us. We're going to um, sing our closing song. It's song number 804 in your songbook, How Firm a Foundation. for today is the scripture verses that we have spoken that God has spoken over our church for 2020 and it is very still um, applicable today it is Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7 and it says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Have a blessed week and know that we will be praying for all of you during this week, especially with the storms coming. Uh, we will pray, we are praying for your safety and your well being this week. And we hope to see you worshiping with us online next week. <music>